So here we have a cooker element. I think it's rated about 1600 watts or something like that. Um, so this is one that I took out of a, a fan oven the other day. It's quite easy, easy to take out. Um, just undo four bolts on the shroud and it just sort of just pulls out quite simple. Anyway, the, um, the customer called me up because every time they turned the cooker on, um, it was tripping out. So it was tripping the, the circuit breaker. So I just thought I'd do a quick video of just um, of just looking at this one before we actually replace the actual um, the good element. So I've got my tester by my side. And so we're going to first off do an insulation resistance test. And so I'm just going to set it to 500 volts. And so obviously when the cooker element is um, installed, the all the metal work is, um, is, it becomes earthed. So if we just go between the actual cooker element itself and onto one of the, um, onto one of the terminals and we carry out an insulation resistance test, as you can see there, it's reading zero mega ohms. So that's showing that it's a dead short. We'll just go onto the other side and we'll do the same test. And again, it's doing the same again there. So straight away, that's telling me that there is a short circuit between both elements and the, um, and the actual uh, metal work, the earthed part. So obviously there, there's a problem. Um, however, sometimes when you are doing insulation resistance tests, it doesn't necessarily give you a dead short it might only be when the cooker element is turned on so you do have to be um, sometimes a little bit aware of that sometimes you can do an insulation resistance test and it's absolutely fine um, however when it heats up that's when the element is no good so the other test that you can can do is just do a continuity test between the elements quickly zero out the leads And this time we will just go from end to end. And again, that's showing there is no continuity there. Whereas obviously the, um, the element that goes through there, it should, there should be low, a low resistance. So I just thought that video was just there. It was a good little video just to do, just to show you what a, an element looks like um, when it's faulty. Okay, so this is the, the new element, and so let's just do a continuity test on this one. We saw on the damaged one that it was a high resistance, whereas this one, 35.4 ohms. So that shows the element is good. And let's just do the insulation resistance test. And again, we saw on this one that it was, we saw on, on the old one that it was at zero, and so Let's test this one, 999, and it is the same, I've already tested it, it is the same on the other end as well. Okay, so as you can see, we've took the, the oven out, and so, as you, it's, it's a bit difficult to see, but inside the oven, there's obviously the fan, and then the shroud and the element goes covers over that and that's the shroud and there's four screws just around the outside and then there's the screws that actually hold the element on also always have a little pot that you put the screws in and also because the oven is still in use with regards to the top oven i always just pull the um the knob off as well so then they can't accidentally turn it on now there is something else that we're going to do on this one so it's not just the element that's gone wrong, it's actually the thermostat that we found has gone wrong. So here we have is the new thermostat. And again, it's just a two, there's just usually two um, prongs on those and the earth's connection. And so we're gonna take that out now and see how to do it. I've not done this one before, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I hope. And so you can see the sensor here and that's the sensor just through, just through there. It's quite hard to see, it's just in the, in the corner. So 
I think I'm gonna to have to take this top cover off, unscrew these screws, Not hopefully not everything, but then it should lift off and then we'll be able to gain access to it. Um, the reason why the element went before is because the thermostat had gone and so this had broken, which is obviously this bit up here. And so, um, so the, the element was on all the time. And so because of that, what we did, we taped up, we pulled the connections out. It's very hard to see in there. We taped up the connections and so they are completely out the way. So, and then pulled the knob off so it can't be turned. So the um, oven can't accidentally be turned on. Now we've undone the top lid. There was just half a dozen screws on both sides. And so now um, the covers come off. And so I'm not gonna take it all the way off. And you can see the connections and stuff for the rest of the cooker behind there, but we don't need to get to them. So all I need to do is get to this. So I'm not just gonna unplug everything just yet because you can soon forget where everything goes back on. So all I need to do is I need to take the sensor out. And so I've just disconnected it from inside the oven. You can't really see it from there. But if we come around to the back of the oven, should just pull out and as you can see there or the probe that's the that, that, that senses the the temperature of the oven and so then that just should just just pull out okay so here we have um so this is the this is the the stat that we're going to be replacing so sometimes they're screwed on but more often than not just like this one they're just pushed on so all you need to do is just gently just get a screwdriver and just prise it off and it should just slide off just like this okay so now we've got good access to everything and so we can see that the we've got the um, connection in the middle Got an orange wire here and the green wire there and that's all we need to be looking at doing we took the old one off it's pretty much exactly the same looking at it there is no sort of um visible any any visible damage to it but i'm pretty sure it is the thermostat that has gone wrong and so as you can see we've just put the connections back on and this time now all we need to do just nice and gently it should just push on and click on just like that. And then with the probe, with the sensor, we now need to just run that back through the oven, back through, sorry, back through the cooker and back into the, into the oven. Okay, so we've put the new thermostat in, the, um, the probe, the sensor is all positioned in properly. And again, it's, it's now positioned in the oven correctly as well. And so all there is to do now is to put the screws back on for the shrouding and hopefully that should all be okay. So the cooker's put back together. We've put all the screws back in and so all the shrouding's on correctly. I've pushed the control knob on and you can't quite see in there very well, but the, um, the elements all in and the shrouds on and, and everything like that. Now, the other thing, what I didn't notice when I had, um, come previously which I should have done was this light that indicates that there's power and that there's power to the element came on um, as soon as the oven was turned on and so that that's an indication if that's on when the control knob is off that so that tells you there that the um, that the element is, is is live so that shows that the thermostat has possibly welded shut so as you can see the um, there's power to the oven so now let's see if the if it works and as you can see the little neon has come on and you can see that the fan and the light has come on and again you can see the little probe in the corner and the clips that's on so that needs to be positioned correctly and there's the four screws for the shroud so they don't want to be turned too tight um, well they, they want to be tight but not not yanked too tight and also there's the two screws that hold the element as well. So 
that looks like the oven's working now so and again we'll just test the temperature we'll just turn it up to about 180 degrees and already I can feel the heat coming from from the oven so I'm quite happy that that's working so now all we need to do is put the oven back in right okay so the oven is now back in just one of the things that I thought should also mention so there's the screws in the sides and they just screw into the into the um in, in, into the there's little right angle brackets there so they just screw in and that's what holds the oven in again it's just something to be aware to be aware of so job's done